Hey everybody, Steven here playing Subnautica Below Zero and today is going to be a different video than I typically do because I'm going to be giving my opinion about the new story here. So most of the videos I do on the channel just showcasing the new stuff that they're putting in games or how to find something or maybe it's just a gameplay video but uh, this one giving my opinion on the new story and just kind of right off the bat um, I do want to say I do like the new story. I liked both. I like the original that Tom Jubert was working on, and I do like so far the one that Jill is working on here. Kind of unique for the game to just completely switch gears and have the, the main writer leave kind of halfway through development and uh, somebody else to come on and still keep the main kind of portions of the story, but... All the details surrounding it uh, are completely different here. So let's start with the opener here. And keep in mind, I mean, this is my opinion, and, and people are going to disagree with me on this one. Um, but I'm just happy that they're making another Subnautica game. Originally, this started out as an expansion for the first one, for those uh, that don't know. And then it just turned into a, a full-fledged game. So I am happy to just see that they're making another one of these. But I understand you have the first one, it's open world, and to go from that to a linear story, I mean, a lot of people loved the first game because it was open world, there wasn't a lot of dialogue, you discovered everything on your own, and to go from that to linear, it's going to be something people aren't going to like. But um, specific to the intro here, that I'll click in just a second, the, actually I can start it right now, the first one. I liked it, and I like this one. I didn't see it in its full form because that portion didn't get finished, and we haven't seen this new intro in its fullest form. So I kind of feel impartial. I, I just like both of them, to be honest. I think the first one was more unique because this new one is so much like the first one. But I like it. There's a lot more action. Not that the first one didn't have action. Um, but it was just a completely new d direction to already be on the planet you're waking up versus coming from outer space. Um, and I do like the first voice actress for Robin compared to the second and then now this third one. So hopefully she's back. Fingers crossed on that. But let's go ahead and start this. You sure you want to go through the storm? You crash. We can't come back for you. No. I need cover from Altera satellites. So the story of, in, in this new version, of a sister trying to find her missing sister, um, I think has more emotional weight to it compared to the previous one. So this very much looks like the first game's intro right here. And we're actually going to see some new dialogue, by the way, here in a second. But it, it's not a new idea to have... Uh, we've seen in other games and other movies, one person's looking for another person. I think that has a more emotional core to it than the first version of the story. But I liked that direction that first one was going. So let's go ahead and head out of here. Arrived on 4546B, landing was a bit rough, but I don't think Altera spotted me. The life pod deployed with gusto. Once I tracked it down and get settled, I'll be able to get to work. If Sam left any traces, I'll find them. I'll start with that doodle she sent me. Which right now, by the way, it's not a doodle. It's actually just a picture of the glacial basin. Alright, so once we're here, I'm going to go ahead and go into free cam mode because we're going to talk about a couple different areas with this. So let's go cold, oxygen, fog, and weather. Okay, so I do think that the story now has a just a stronger emotional core to it than the other one. And there's going to be more fine details that I've seen that Jill's been working on. But I also have to keep in mind, I mean, Tom didn't finish the story. Um, Jill hasn't had a lot of time with it either, but um, just from, from what I've seen with the logs and everything like that, there's just going to be more text in that, in this version, compared to the first. Not only the first version that Tom was writing, but um, 
I mean, the first game had a lot of text in it, but it seems like this one's just going to have more because you have people talking, right? So I think we're going to see a little bit more of that, obviously, to map out this this story. And I think that's going to be a good thing to kind of flesh out the world a little bit more. It's that difference between discovering it versus being kind of given these things. Um and we'll see how that unfolds. And I don't want to fully judge this story just yet because it's not done. Um, but I am liking it so far and the, the direction they're really taking this. So let's talk about a handful of things um, with this. Obviously, the map is a lot smaller in this game as well. That's, uh, I know, something people haven't been too happy with. I am excited that they're expanding the Glacial Basin and really trying to flesh out the on land stuff that you'll be doing because that's a gamble for them i mean this is a uh, primarily a game that is underwater obviously so to take the gamble to do a lot of stuff on land it, it may not work out in their favor the stuff that i have played i have enjoyed but i still think it needs a lot of work um, we're finally getting more plant variations the snow stalker is really cool. The penguins are cool. I think if they had one more, and the ice worm is is a scary creature when you're actually running away from them. Um, but with that being said, if they just had one other creature, I think that would be something that would just elevate this a little bit more. And as of right now, the kite wing sky ray is still listed on the Faro site as being. Essentially, it's it's a bird. It looks like a velociraptor bird to me, but uh, that is still on the list to get put in game. Now we're just really waiting for that to be implemented here. Um, but we do have the new uh, plants here, which I don't think these have names just yet. To me, it looks like uh, taco or clam or lettuce or something, and then we have this kind of like mound, like termite mound with leaves coming out of the top. Um, so we have that. They just added in the pathway stuff here that's purple and then we got our little purple bulbs so they are adding new plants which is really really awesome um, hopefully they add even more I just think the more variation the more you're going to engage those players with this so uh, glacial basin is a risk um, I, I think it'll pan out in their favor if they continue down the path that they're going right now which is more variation and expanding it so but I, I like it so far with this um, and that actually is at the root of the new story, too, because Sam is actually working on the spy, uh, the spy penguin. And she's discovered some things, and this communication with their sister is um, kind of at the heart of this. The quirkiness between the two is interesting, just reading the logs. Um, I don't know, sometimes I read it and I was like, it just sounds awkward. Um, and maybe that's just me reading into it, and it's just how I'm trying to kind of going over it in my head. But it does seem a little bit awkward with some of it i don't know if they're gonna have dialogue if there's like audio to it that would be even better maybe they could like you could hear the tone and stuff like that in the person's voice with that hopefully they keep the same actress that plays sam as well because i did like her with that um but with this we do have robin working for is it xeno works which is a new company that they've added which gets bought out by Altera, and Altera in this is very evil. I mean, just how they're painting them with all of the logs and everything. Um, they are a very greedy kind of evil corporation. That doesn't mean that didn't kind of come across a little bit in the first game, at least from my point of view um, when I was playing, but they, they've made it more of a point to kind of showcase that in this game. So um, that's kind of at the heart of the story as well. So you have them trying to kind of cover up Sam is missing. Um, but for Robin, that's like, that just doesn't seem right. It seems like there's some shady behavior going on and she has to come find her sister. And like I said, I think that is just a better e emotional story. I don't think everybody's going to necessarily like find that they connect with it. But I think for just kind of a blanket, how many people can we reach? I think that would that's kind of the better route compared to the first story. Um, and like I said, that's really coming from that emotional standpoint. I still liked the first version of this. I do like this version a little bit more from what I've seen so far. So Glacial Basin, we have the on land stuff, which is, uh, so far has been, has been pretty cool. I, I still, like I said, I think it needs work. And if they nail that, I think 
a lot of people's concerns with the game are going to go away is going to be really that and then just really fleshing out this story so the map itself much smaller we have a decent amount of biomes um the big thing with the map being smaller that i've noticed is their attention to detail and how intricate these areas are now is really really cool I mean, just looking at the lily pad biome and how much they've packed in here, if you look at the kelp caves, the twisty bridges, all these areas, they've really just pumped a ton of time into nailing down the look. And they did that with the first game, but all the little intricate tunnels and little nooks and crannies that you can go into, um, it, it's made a difference. So the map being smaller, but having all of that, same thing, it makes it feel like a more intimate setting compared to that vast open world that you had with the first game. Although I do miss, I mean, especially when you would go from like one biome and you'd have to go clear across the map to the other and you'd go through tunnels, you'd go through the Lost River to get down to the inactive lava zone and all that. That That is something that I, I think I'll miss with this. But the game when you're playing it does feel much better than me zooming around in free cam mode. I will say that. So we have that. Um... Alan, the new logs from Alan are interesting. Um, he uh, seems a little bit more quirky from what I've seen. And I think that's a good thing. I did like the previous one. I don't think they'll get rid of the actor that was playing him. I think he just nailed the sound of Alan with this. But to have him not so, I don't know, stiff and rigid with how he would speak, I think is going to be a good thing. Um, I don't think everybody's going to like that, obviously. But uh, I think for most people, it's going to make him a character that you'll root for a little bit more. At least you'll enjoy a little bit more. Um, for those that like him to be like more alien, rigid, and all that other stuff, I, th I think that's going to be a letdown for them. But me personally, I think it's going to be a better interaction to have him and Robin bouncing off of each other with that. So uh, I do like the direction they're going with that. I just want to hear all of this stuff once they finally add in the voice work to this, because they don't have that right now. Um, let's see, let's go over to some of the stuff over here. In terms of the water creatures, though, by the way, they do have a really good diversity of creatures this time. Um, they did that with the first game, and they have that here, and I like that. Big thing is, is and somebody posted about this, is like the... Uh, like especially when you're looking at the the crypto sucus, um, they have so many of those packed in areas. I think they're going to need to thin that out a little bit. Um, it makes it not that it shouldn't be rough to travel, but it just seems like they're too densely packed in there in certain areas. Uh, there we go. So yeah, looking at all the tunnels, I mean there are a lot. All that. So. I think that's the upside to the smaller map. The attention to detail and then just all these little areas we get to explore. And that that tighter setting. Especially when you come down here and you're like, I don't know if I'm going to make it out. I have been down here, haven't been able to make it to an oxygen plant and accidentally drowned. So there are some uh, benefits to having that. It's, a, it's just a new challenge, right? So let's go back to daytime here. I like the twisty bridges and how they've expanded that. Um, curious to see the end game, and I really think that's going to be obviously one of the the make or break points for the game. Also, if the ending's bad, I think a lot of people are going to be let down um, with this. We had the fake one um, for those that remember. Uh, I think IGP covered it. I covered it on this channel. You can find one, and it was like the Vesper would blow up and all that. But that was just a hidden one. Not the one that they're going to use, but I am curious to see what Jill actually does with this now. And, uh, I mean, I could speculate a bunch of different things that they could potentially do. Obviously, we're going to find Sam with this. We're still going to make Alan's body. But when we have all those pieces in place, we're still going to be dealing with... Uh, Marg, what does that all mean with this? So um, that'll that'll be a big one, and that's why I'm kind of like I like the direction it's going, but I'm also kind of reserving my judge my full judgment on it until it's completed because it's hard. I mean, they're in the process of making this game, 
But like I said, my opinion is I actually really enjoy the new story. I enjoyed the old one, but I do enjoy the new one just a little bit more from what I've seen so far. And right now I did see today they are in the process of trying to link up the story and all the different sections that they have right now. I haven't pushed that too far. Unfortunately, the game is kind of... Every time I go to the Sanctuary, it crashes on me right now, so I can't push that too far. I've reported it, but it just... Uh, that's kind of part of playing in the experimental build. We're going to get these things. So so jumping ahead, I do want to highlight the animations because this go around, they're just really, really good. The dev team has done phenomenal. And uh, especially with the snow stalkers themselves, just to showcase something really, really quick that's cool. If there's one out here, these guys will swim, which they would if I would spawn them there. And then they will crawl out and then they will shake off. That's a new animation, really, really cool. So they've been putting, like I said, just time into making everything really, really quality with this. So that is uh, my opinion on all of this, but I also know that everybody's going to have their own opinion on this, So, and I love hearing from you guys. So, I mean, you can agree with me or disagree with me on any of this stuff, but uh, I definitely want to hear from everybody. What do you think of the new story, if you've even been able to play it? Um, I've had a ton of people asking, like, how do you get it? It's the experimental build. I'll make sure that that video is linked in the description and at the end of this video so you guys can do that. That only works if you're on Steam, by the way. If you are playing with uh, the Epic Game Store version, they just don't have that. And uh, this was almost about to freeze on me again. So that is it for this video if you like the video hit the like button for me if you want to continue to follow along with all of my content hit the subscribe button for me thanks so much for watching